with a time of silent meditation. Let us pray. O God of all seasons and senses, give us the sense of your timing to submit gracefully and rejoice quietly in the turn of the seasons. In this season of short days and long nights of gray and white and cold, teach us the lessons of endings, children growing, friends leaving, jobs concluding, stages finishing, Grieving over, grudges over, blaming over, excuses over. O oh God, grant us a sense of your timing in this season of short days and long nights, of gray and white and cold. Teach us the lessons of beginnings, that our endings may be a starting place, a planting of seeds which bring to birth what is ready to be born, something right and just and different. A new song, a deeper relationship, a fuller love in the fullness of your time. O oh God, grant us a sense of your sense of timing. Amen. Our scripture this morning is printed on the insert um, inside your bulletin. You may follow along with me. We will be reading Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 18. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this Christmas card came in the mail, and on the front it shows the shepherds out in the fields watching their flock, familiar scene, and one shepherd announces to the rest, I'm bored tonight. I'm going to go check out the next field. And then when you open the card and you see, you see that the shepherd has returned, but, of course, none of the other shepherds are there. And this little shepherd says, hey, where is everybody? Did I miss anything? Merry Christmas. Now, the other shepherds, of course, were running toward Bethlehem, focused on finding that newborn baby whose birth had been so dramatically announced. So, yes, that one shepherd missed something big time. He missed the good news and the angel and the heavenly host and the baby and everything. Everything. I wonder how much of that solitary shepherd lives in all of us. I wonder how much good news we miss because we are someplace else, spiritually or physically or mentally, focusing on something else, not paying attention. I wonder how many signs of 
God's glorious realm we miss because we aren't listening for voices that point the way or because we have allowed fear to rule our hearts or because we have let apathy take over our lives. I, I wonder. But then I think about those other shepherds and my heart is truly warmed for they not only hear the good news, but they believe it and they respond to it, letting go of their fears and risking their livelihoods as they seek out the promise of peace on earth, the promise of joy come down, the promise of God with us in Christ Jesus, all within their reach. And so today, it is completely appropriate, especially today, to say that on that night, those shepherds were commissioned to go into Bethlehem and to look for the sign of God's presence on earth. And is this not the commission that we are all given to go and to look for signs of God's presence in the world. Now, interestingly enough, that word go is so common in the scripture that it doesn't even get its own listing in a proper concordance or one of the major online search Bible dictionaries. Now, if we were in a class setting, I might ask you to shout out as many biblical phrases as you can come up with that contain the word go. And we might hear phrases like, let us go to Bethlehem and see. Or Jesus telling disciples, go and tell, what, tell John what you have heard and seen. Or God coming to Moses and saying, go to Pharaoh and say to him, let my people go etc., etc. So many times folks are told to go. And in reading and hearing all these commands to go, it will become very clear very quickly that Christianity is not a spectator sport. It is an on your feet, sleeves rolled up, go where the action is, go where the holy is. Go to where the way of living and being and serving and worshiping reflects the God of love. Now, it might be that your particular commission is to go to the person in the pew around you right now, or to go someplace in Bloomington, or to go halfway around the world, maybe even a place called Lesotho. Whether we go physically or go with our money or resources or go with our prayers and notes and messages or all of the above, we, yes, we've all been commissioned to go. But not just go, but as you go to look for, to intentionally seek out signs of God's presence in this world. That's what those shepherds were commissioned to do. Because before you can be in the presence of the holy, you need to look for the holy. You need to survey the scene and, and try to see where God is and what God is doing before you can find your place in God's presence. The shepherds were commissioned to seek out the holy but not on some mystical mountaintop, not in a set-apart grand tabernacle, but in the honest-to-goodness messiness of life. Think about it. The context of this whole story, the whole situation was messy. The pregnancy, the stable, the crowded town of Bethlehem, where David's many descendants had arrived not by choice, but because they had been ordered there by Caesar. 
We can imagine all the inter-family dramas among these relatives, these distant offspring of David through his many wives and who knows how many mistresses and concubines and, well, you get the picture. Messy. I mean, even in the best of family reunions, there is sometimes some messiness, right? So, here we have these shepherds, fervently looking for a sign of the divine on earth. And I'm really glad they were intentional about it. Because it's amazing what you can't see when you're not looking for it. Take, for example, the Firestone dealership. Now, stay with me. We use the one just, across, just over that way on 3rd and Walnut. It's very convenient. We just got my Prius tires replaced there the other day. But when Bruce told me there was another Firestone on College Mall Road, I didn't believe him. After all, I've lived here for 24 years, driven down that road 100 times, and I know it's not there. I've never seen it. Until... I was driving to Target the other day and intentionally looked for it and just to prove, and to prove Bruce wrong, of course, and well, lo and behold, there it was, hidden in plain sight all along. How many of you knew it was there? Oops. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yes, it is amazing what you can't see when you're not looking for it. That's how it was in Bethlehem that night. Very few people were looking for God come to earth as a baby. So almost everyone missed that holy presence. Most people walking past that stable, if they saw anything at all, saw only a pitiful couple who had given birth in circumstances that we wouldn't wish on anybody. What a shame, some might have said. Others might have said, somebody really ought to do something about this. But the shepherds, because they had listened and because they believed what they had been told, the shepherds were intentionally looking for signs of God's presence. And so they wandered in places that other folks might not have thought to look. They wandered the back alleys, listening for God's cry, God in the cry of a vulnerable child needing care. They peered into stables, looking for God in a family that was alone and overwhelmed and in an unfamiliar surrounding. They searched the places that were hidden in plain sight, praying that they would be able to discern the power of love that brings a light of hope even in the messiest of circumstances. And lo and behold, they found what they were told to look for because guess what? They were looking. And whether or not this story happened exactly as Luke tells it, the shepherds did discover this truth, that wherever and whenever two or three are gathered by the power and presence of love, the Savior reigns, salvation comes, Christ is there, and hope is there, and peace is there, and joy is there, 
and love's presence is so palpable and powerful and divine that you can't help but tell others what you know to be true. Yes, when you've experienced the power of love, you have to tell someone your story, right? So, unable to hold back, those shepherds, right then, right there at the manger, joyfully blurted out their story of the angel and the heavenly host and their rush to Bethlehem to seek and to see. And according to scripture, everyone who heard their story there at the manger, Mary, Joseph, perhaps the innkeeper, perhaps other onlookers, everyone who heard them was amazed. Now, of course, those shepherds told their good news story. Who wouldn't? They couldn't help it. But the telling part was not included as part of their commission. The angel didn't commission them to go out and tell their story, didn't commission them to preach or to teach, but the angel did commission them to let go of their fears, which gave them permission to leave their livelihoods behind, which led them to look for the holy in a place that was unfamiliar and in lives that are vulnerable and in situations that are messy which led them to the Christ, which of course resulted in them telling others this good news, which led to a sense of awe and amazement, which led to an act of worship, giving praise and glory to God. And it was all so wonderful. Now in just a few minutes, we all of us are going to take part in an act of worship which gives praise and glory to God, in which we commission Mark Knowles and Danielle Murray Knowles to be co-workers with Global Ministries of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and the United Church of Christ. Their commission has some similarities to the Shepherd's Commission, for they are not being called specifically to be preachers or teachers of the good news. You see, the Evangelical Church of South Southern Africa already has that part covered very well and is doing a great job with sharing the gospel of love. Rather, like the shepherds, Danielle and Mark are being commissioned to first, let go of their fears. Second, leave behind their home and current livelihoods. Third, go to a place that is unfamiliar. Fourth, intentionally seek out the holy. And fifth, they are being commissioned to expect to see and name God's presence as they work with and live among and serve side by side with our partners and friends and co-workers in Christ in Lesotho. And if we use our scripture as our guide, Mark and Danielle will be doing one more thing. Like those shepherds who returned home rejoicing, Mark and Danielle will return home in more or less three years. But when they return home, they will be glorifying and praising God for the good news, what they have seen and heard. And that means that we can look forward to hearing the good news of what God is up to in this world and in their lives. And so Mark and Danielle, We're going to hold you to this. Upon your return, please tell us how you have experienced Christ's living presence in the world. 
tell us, please, about how resources are shared, how partnerships are strengthened, how the vulnerable are cared for, how God is praised. Upon your return, tell us how you've experienced Christ in community, where, where hope and, and joy and, and strength trump poverty and despair, where fear takes a back seat even in the most dire of circumstances. Come back and tell us, please. And tell us even the hard news about how we are sometimes stumbling blocks to God's justice and about how our own ignorance and arrogance gets in the way of love's agenda. And upon your return, we'll do this. We'll tell you our good news. We'll tell you how the Holy Spirit has continued to nudge us to open our hearts wider, to, to serve this community more fully, to make this corner of earth a more beautiful and welcoming sign of Christ's inclusive love and a beacon of hope for all God's children. We'll share our stories. How's that? And together, with the wide-eyed wonder of shepherds, we will be amazed by what we have seen and heard. And God will be praised. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. I'd like to invite our moderator, Linda Abe, and Kathy Nichols, who will be introduced, and Danielle and Mark to come forward. We welcome today Kathy Nichols, Executive of Mission Personnel, representing the Africa Office of the Global Ministries of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and the United Church of Christ. So we are very excited this morning to have Danielle Murray Knowles and Mark Knowles here, who are candidates to serve in Lesotho. Um, with the Lesotho Evangelical Church of Southern Africa. Uh, this is a partner who has been a strong partner of Global Ministries for many years, and they have sent a request to us to have someone, or some two, come <laughs> and serve and work with them on strengthening the schools that they run, uh, the churches that they support, the hospitals that they run, and so Mark and Danielle will be working with the development office to better serve the communities in Lesotho. We are here in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord to commission Mark and Danielle as mission co-workers of Global Ministries to work as planning officers in Lesotho. In this commissioning, the church celebrates by prayer and action these persons whom God has called to serve in a particular ministry in another land. Danielle and Mark are called to be planning officers and to minister in partnership with others in the community of faith in that place. Mark and Danielle, we are gathered this day to celebrate with you the call of God in Christ to a particular Christian service and your acceptance of that call. We rejoice with you as we recognize the service of the whole church through Global Ministries, the United Church of Christ, and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. With God's help, will you endeavor to be faithful to your duties as mission co-workers working with our partner, the Lesotho Evangelical Church of Southern Africa in Maseru, Lesotho. We will. Will you strive to work among the people of Lesotho with humility and patience remembering that you are invited as colleagues, eager to learn as well as to teach and serve. Will you humbly speak and live your faith as Christians, knowing that we are all members, one of another, in the whole Christian community? We will. With one voice, let the congregation 
respond in your bulletin. As one part of the whole Church of Christ gathered here, we pledge our prayers, our concern, and our gifts to sustain Danielle and Mark and all others who serve in our behalf in Christ's name. Upon these mutual assurances and in the name of Jesus Christ, we recognize and commission Danielle and Mark as mission co-workers of Global Ministries, the United Church of Christ, and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs> we have a, a gift to share with you, Mark and Danielle. A chalice and a patent which were handmade in Bethany, West Virginia. So let me tell you a little bit about them. Bethany, West Virginia, as you mo no doubt know, is a home of Alexander Campbell, one of the founders of the Stone Campbell Movement, in which you were raised, Mark, and in which the Christian Church Disciples of, of Christ find, find its grounding. And secondly, this chalice and patent are inscribed with the cross of St. Andrew. St. Andrew is associated with Scotland, the cradle of the Presbyterian tradition, which you were in which you were raised, Danielle. And it was from the Church of Scotland that Presbyterians first came to these shores and influenced the thinking of Alexander Campbell and Barton Stone both. And third, these are symbols of Christ's table, where all are welcome. So you have told us, Danielle, several times how welcome you have always felt at the table. Because here in this place, we have a practice of offering gluten-free wafers. I guess that doesn't happen in other places sometimes. <laughs> and so may this gift remind you not only of Christ's love for the world, but that in Christ, we are one. And at the table, we are home. I didn't know I was going to do this. <laughs> We are going to now in, engage in a very special um, time of community prayer, which we call laying on of hands. I'm going to ask Mark and Danielle to come, come down and stand right here. And you can face the, uh, just stand right here. And you can face the, 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 chap, the chancel. And what I'd like you to do is kind of scooch in all of you. We're going to have to, get, we're going to, have to move on this one. Uh, move in the aisle and press your, put your hand lightly on Mark or Danielle's um, shoulder or arm. Not all of you, but you, you can touch the arms of the people behind you. So, so come on up. Everybody mess up. Come. We want to give the oper everybody a chance to connect with Mark and Danielle in this time of prayer. So move together. Everybody touching, uh, laying your hands on Mark and Danielle. <laughs> And where is Linda? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> Everybody have a hand or a... Okay. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for Mark and Danielle who have walked alongside of many of us at FCC and in the community and in so many capacities, sharing in life and ministry with Cuba pilgrims, crafters, choir members, book group, youth group, meditation group, using their gifts for service in many ways, hammering nails for habitat, flipping pancakes for breakfast, passing out blankets at the shelter, laughing fully, listening deeply, and loving authentically. We rejoice that you have called Mark and Danielle to continue to be witness of your love and grace through their ministry with the Lesotho Evangelical Church in Southern Africa. Help them to fulfill the mission to which you have called them as they seek to know what faithfulness requires of them. Strengthen the resolves that have been made and uphold them with hope and encouragement. Protect them, teach them, and support them as they take this next step in their own journey to becoming the people you want them to be. 
Fill them with the Holy Spirit and enable them to do their tasks faithfully and joyfully. Let their experience further enrich us so that we too will glorify you by serving our community in the love of Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you return to your seats, Linda will prepare to give the invitation to giving and invite you to greet Danielle and Mark in the dinner that we will have just following the service. If you're unable to stay for dinner, Mark and Danielle will stay for a few minutes in the, in the narthex area just following the service. And you'll want